Hey guys, my name is Yasmina and welcome back to my channel. Before we get into this video, I just wanted to add a quick disclaimer. You might have noticed that I haven't been uploading so frequently and I really apologize for that. It's kind of a mixture of not having enough time recently to film, I've been very busy. And uh, also, to be honest, kind of a slump and a general lack of ideas. If there's any video you would like to see from me or any topic you would like me to cover, please do leave it in the comment section below and I will do my best to try and cover your ideas. Let's get on to today's video. So it's going to be a recent reads slash wrap up of the recent books that I've completed. I will do it the same way I did last time because I think that was quite fun um, and talk about them from my least favorite to my most favorite of the books that I've read recently, okay? So starting off with my least favorite book that I've read recently and honestly this was quite a surprise. Uh, I wouldn't have said that I would rate this so low, in fact actually this was in my uh, 5 star predictions video, books that I was hoping I would give 5 stars to. Alas, I gave this 2 stars. Iona, sequel to Eon by Alison Goodman. I'll try not to get into too many spoilers for this because obviously it is a sequel. Even so, that one I gave five stars to and I do remember it being a really good read, hence why I gave it five stars. So naturally, I was expecting to really enjoy the sequel too. Um, well, obviously I didn't. I actually, at one point I wanted to DNF this book, but I forced myself to finish the last like 100 pages by just basically skim reading so like reading really quickly and just getting it over with because I could not stand it anymore. It also took me a really long time to finish because I just did not want to pick it up. I did not want to read it anymore. There was definitely something that bothered me about it. Um, there's this really weird love triangle in it and it's not done very well in the, in the sense that I don't understand why that is a triangle because it's kind of messed up if you know the, the context. There was a lot of politics um, in the sequel and a lot of sort of moving around but not really that much happened and so I was just really bored throughout. I didn't really like the main character this time around at all. I remember liking her in the first book but again either my tastes have completely changed from five years ago or this was just not a very good sequel. I'm not really sure. But yeah, uh, I don't know. That, that, this wasn't uh, this wasn't a good experience for me reading this, so yeah, that's the first one. The next book I want to talk about is uh, a book I actually listened to, so it's an audible book and I'll put it here. It's an, it's an audio book. Now, it is also an audible book, but it's an audio book. That's the word. <laughs> I'll put the cover right here and that is A Walk in the Woods by Bill Bryson. As an audiobook, I, I really enjoyed it. The narrator is not Bill Bryson himself, which I was kind of disappointed about in the beginning, um, because I know he does narrate some of his own books, but this particular one was narrated by someone else. Um, but he did a good job of it, so I can't really complain. This book is a non-fiction book about Bill Bryson himself going on a hike through the Appalachian Trail in just so like um, uh, Easter, Easter, the east part of America. Um, it's like one of the most famous uh, hiking trails in America, I think, and it's one of the longest. Yeah, it's said to be one of the hardest trails to, to hike and things like that. And he had never done anything like that before. Um, and he somehow decided he wanted to try it. I won't spoil <laughs> what happens, but needless to say, it, it was a very interesting book. It was a very nice book to, to listen to, just Bill Bryson telling the, his experience and what it's like, you know, to, to hike a trail like that and to just be surrounded by woods all the time and darkness and not a lot of people. They did meet some people along the way that were doing the trail with them uh, at the same time as them, but mostly, you know, it was just them and the woods four or five months straight. <laughs> Overall, I did really enjoy it. It's just a I had, I guess, a misconception that it might be funnier. Uh, it was... His, his way of talking is quite funny. I, I think I just expected maybe a little bit more. Definitely would recommend, so yeah. Next book I want to talk about is a graphic novel, and that is Lumberjanes, Beware the Kitten Holly <laughs> by uh, Noel Stevenson and 
a few others. Yeah, so it's written by Noel Stevenson and Grace Ellis. It's illustrated by Brooke Allen, colored by Marta Laiho, and letters by Aubrey Pais. There you go. I always feel it's important to mention um, everyone who worked on graphic novels and comics and things like that because it's very rarely just one person and they don't, sometimes they don't get credit for it because people just forget to mention them. I think that's important. Anyway, yeah, so this is a graphic novel about a, I think a sort of like Girl Scouts kind of thing and it just follows the girls going on various adventures uh, at this camp that most of them they're not supposed to go on so they kind of like sneak out when they're not supposed to and they get into trouble and there is definitely a magical um, fantasy element to this story, to this camp. Uh, there's a lot of weird stuff that they um, stumble upon and it's uh, yeah the characters are super funny, the writing is funny, the um, actual illustrations is very colorful obviously there's a lot of green and blue that was a crack, sorry. Every chapter starts with the, uh, like a badge that they can earn and it, the badge relates to the follow, the chapter's theme, the chapter's story. Um, Cause kind of like each chapter is them earning a badge of some sort. All of the little adventures that they went on kind of were in, in their own, like a, a full story, but it was so short, it was so condensed that I, I kind of wanted more because of that for each thing that they did, I kind of want, I felt like it deserved more. I don't know. That's my only complaint really, but um, I'm pretty sure there already is a volume two of this. So I'll definitely be picking that one up in the future and continuing on following these girls and their weird fantastical camp adventures. <laughs> so yeah, definitely one I would recommend as graphic novel go. Then I want to talk about another audiobook that I listened to and that is called Modern Romance by Aziz Ansari. If you didn't know, Aziz Ansari is a comedian and he writes a lot of uh, TV. Personally, I do really like his comedy and I do find him really funny and uh, I absolutely loved uh, the show Master of None that he wrote and also acted in. I thought that was brilliant. This book is um, an exploration of what it's like to to date and have a romantic life in the 21st century basically and all of the technologies we have and how we how we date these days because it is very different from how people used to date only 20 10 years ago even he he, de he definitely makes the point that people in general have become more recluse socially and we we find it harder and harder to actually socialize and meet people in real life just you know on the streets or whatever when before that that was the only way that people did it and and that i also find that super interesting that most people most married couples back in the i think it was like 40s and 50s actually married a person living if not in their in the same building but in their immediate neighborhood and that was the reach that they had that was the extent of the pool that most people had or most people had access to whereas now people meet from all over the world and get together and you know distance it, while it is obviously still a factor these days it's much less of a factor and the pool of, of potential partners that you have these days is pretty much you know unlimited so yeah it was definitely a very interesting read and a very interesting and, and relevant look at dating these days and obviously it is Aziz Ansari so he does uh, tell the story, you know, in his own manner. Uh, so if you find his humor funny, then you will enjoy this. But I would say even if you don't, it's definitely not about the comedy. It is about the fact he just tells the story and he tells about all the research he's done, all the stuff that he found out, um, the statistics that he found out about dating in the 21st century. So even if you don't like his humor, you might still enjoy this book. The second to last book I will talk about today is a nonfiction book. Again, actually, I actually did. Re I just realized I did read quite a lot of nonfiction recently. But anyway, this is Diary of a Bookseller by Sean Bithell. Oh, wow. This, oh my God, this was so good. If any of you have seen the show Black Books, read this book. It is so uncanny and I, I mean, Honestly, look, I'll, I'll just read you the first paragraph because this made me laugh out loud because it literally mentions black books in the first paragraph. I'll, I'll just read you the first because it starts off with a quote from George Orwell 
um, from a essay that he has called Bookshop Memories. The moment I started reading this book, I realized I hadn't read that essay by George Orwell and I love George Orwell. I love his writing. It's amazing. Um, so I quickly uh, looked it up and you can read it for free online. It's a pretty short essay because um, he, he references that essay throughout this book. And then his first sentence is this. Orwell's reluctance to commit to bookselling is understandable. There is a stereotype of the impatient, intolerant, antisocial propri proprietor played so perfectly by Dylan Moran in Black Books, and it seems, on the whole, to be true. So that's how this book starts. And it, immediately I was like, yes, I adore Black Books. I think it's one of the funniest shows I've ever seen. I love all the characters, and especially Dylan Moran, and, and portraying the main character is just perfection. And I just... This whole book is so uncanny because it really shows how black books, how well written black books is because it's so real. You would think it's ridiculous and that stuff doesn't happen, but oh, oh, it does. It does. And this book is proof to that. So Sean Bithell is a bookseller in Scotland. He has, I think, well, they say throughout the book that it's the biggest secondhand um, bookshop in Scotland. It is appropriately called The Bookshop. It's actually in a little town called Wigtown somewhere in Scotland. And this is just, as the title says, it's a daily account of Sean Bethel's life as a bookseller. It made me laugh so much, but it also warmed my heart and it also made me question humanity because there's so much stuff that happens in a bookshop. I never knew all this stuff could happen in a, in a bookshop and especially it's a, it's a bookshop in a really, really small town in Scotland. So I, d I didn't even imagine that it could have so much activity and so many weird characters that go there and just a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff happens and it's fantastic and I would highly recommend it if you like books. I assume you do since you're watching this video, but if you if you like books and if that sounds interesting to you to see how a bookseller runs his business, this is fantastic. I would highly, highly recommend this book. I would also highly, highly recommend the show Black Books. Please go watch it. Stop everything you're doing and watch that if you haven't. Okay, and the last book I'm going to talk about today is the best book I've read recently. It is a contemporary novel, and that is Radio Silence by Alice Osman. So I mentioned in my latest book haul that uh, I've been meaning to get Alice Osman's books for a while, and I did get two of them. I've only read this one so far, but I obviously I loved it, and I want to read everything she's written, because she also has a YouTube channel, and um, I'll link her channel down below. and. I just find her so relatable and also inspiring because I'm also a writer and the kind of books she, she's writing is also the kind of books I write. It's a good time and um, I love this book. It is the kind of contemporary that, again, kind of the kind of contemporary I want to write and the kind of contemporary book I love to read and I haven't actually read something like this in quite a long time. It really is such a strong friendship story. I need more of that in contemporary. I feel like a lot of contemporary these days is focused just on the romance aspect of it and while that can be great, I definitely prefer friendship stories in contemporary. That's one of the main things I look for in contemporary is a strong friendship, a strong squad. That is the stuff I love to write about and the stuff I like to read as well. I guess I didn't mention what this book is about. It's a YouTube podcast that is called Radio Silence. It's a sci-fi podcast. Think sort of Doctor Who, but in podcast style. The The creator of Radio Silence is unknown. No one knows who they are. And it has sort of a cult following. It's very popular on YouTube. It's kind of like that, that sort of niche where most people haven't heard of it. But if you look into it, it's like really popular. The, the main character is a massive fan of this show, of this podcast. And she's one of the ones that, you know, post theories about it and, and just talk nonstop about it online. She never mentions this to anyone in real life because she's one of, because she feels like no one cares about the kind of stuff that she likes and she, she can't find people who she can really relate to. They're all into stuff that she's not into. And yeah, but she's a massive fan of this show. I'll just say that she gets to help make this show at some point, which is one of the best things for her ever that could ever happen. I'm not gonna spoil anything, obviously, but let's just say, yeah, she gets to at some point be a part of this show. It's a great book. <laughs> if you like contemporary, I think you will love this. So definitely 
give Radio Silence a go. Okay, so those were all of the books I have read recently. This was a long video, I didn't expect it to be this long. This proves that I haven't filmed a video in quite a long time because I just ramble, so apologies for that. I will try to edit this down as much as I can, but if it, if it does turn out a bit long, so yeah, do let me know um, if you've read any of these books, what you thought of them, um, or if any of them sound interesting to you. I will leave links to all of them down in the description from Book Depository if you're interested in purchasing any of them. Um, otherwise, do let me know what you've read recently and what was some of the highlights of the books that you've read recently. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you next time with a new video. Bye! <laughs>